And now, another hodgepodge feature film. Hi, friends and neighbors. Marco Etheridge coming to you from the virtual studio out in the ether to read an excerpt from my story, Longing Uncaged. This story was inspired by some fantastic artwork by Ayumi Richard Crow, one of our guest artists for Hotchpotch, Volume 2, Issue 1, coming out July 15th. A zebra finch fluttered in free air four stories above the ground, bereft of cage, owner, and security. Gazing out of the window, Claire Allen watched the confused songbird. Claire was 32 years old and alone. She spoke with a firm voice, a voice strong enough to carry her message through the glass pane. Good luck, Charlie. Time to fly. You're on your own now, just like me. Her words rebounded off the hard surfaces of an empty apartment. The painted walls were bare, save for lighter squares and rectangles, the ghosts of framed family photos. On the hardwood floors, good red oak from the 50s, sun-faded outlines framed the absence of Turkish rugs rolled and sold, and rising from the oak floor, an old-fashioned birdcage, empty. Two packed suitcases stood outside in the entry hall. The inside pocket of the smaller suitcase contained an unused passport, its clean pages awaiting the ink stamp of visas. Outside the reflecting glass, Charlie the Finch floated in midair. The bird swiveled its orange beak back and forth as if searching for options. Then it ceased thrashing its wings and dropped away, disappearing into the long green canopy of maple trees that lined the street below. Attaboy, Charlie. Claire watched the Finch until it vanished. Then she raised her eyes above the suspended electrical wires, above the facades on the far side of the brick canyon. She stared up into the blue-white tapestry of sky and clouds. She stood still as a statue, unsmiling. Her hair was perfectly coiffed, her face painted just so, a copy of the mask Grandma Cecile wore after a department store makeover. Around Claire's neck hung baubles salvaged from her grandmother's treasures, Concentric ropes of shining balls cascaded over a Bon Marche dress bought new 40 years ago. Lowering her gaze from the sky, Claire studied the ghostly image reflected in the glass. Yes, if she stepped into 1980 Seattle, she'd easily pass for Grandma Cecile. Cecile Allen, married name or family name, she never clarified which. An elegant woman known for her poise and sense of style. That's what Grandma's friends said, at least when she was in the room. Out of earshot, Cecile's posh friends sang a different tune. Poor Cecile, saddled with an infant grandchild. True, the baby is adorable, but that horrible daughter. Can you imagine dumping a baby on your own mother and then running away? It's dreadful. Poor Cecile can't bear to talk about it, won't even mention her daughter's name. I know, dear. Imagine your daughter turning out like that. Oh, gives you the shivers to think about. Baby Claire grew into a quiet little girl, a child who could slip into perfectly decorated rooms without being noticed. Hiding behind a couch or crouched in a hallway, she caught the old bitches at their gossip. She learned to hate them and their sharp tongues, how they croaked about her mother, stabbing the memory of a woman Claire had never known. Bitches. The word echoed through the empty space. You can read the rest of my story and so much more in Hodgepodge, Volume 2, Issue 1, going live on July 15th. Stay tuned to our Facebook page, our Instagram page, our YouTube channel for lots more news coming up and lots more sneak peeks into this wonderful issue. Hope to see you there. Ciao for now.